Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, are comics dying? Well, I think I've answered this mail a lot. Um, I, I mean, it, it, this has been the terminal question. And what's funny, it's been the terminal question I've answered several times in this, this channel's uh, life. So for more than five years. But this is the question people have had since, I mean, the early 80s. I remember one of my first memories of going into a comic shop, which was uh, mid-80s probably. I don't know. Uh, Math, I don't know, I, in the 80s, let's just say. Um, and uh, I, I do remember Guns N' Roses wasn't a thing yet. So that, that'll, that'll date it somewhat. Anyway, uh, going into a comic shop and the uh, owner was talking about how uh, comics were dying. That, that, you know, there was trouble afoot and they were definitely dying. And so this has been a conversation that's gone on for a long time. You can go back to the 70s. You could see people talking about death comics then. It's just, it, 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 it just happens a lot. And so, so this isn't new. Now, this isn't what a lot of people on YouTube want to hear, because if there's one thing that, that this generation, here's where I'll, I'll be like old guy bitching at young generation. If there's one thing people don't want to hear, it's that we've been through most of this before. You know, we really want to feel like this moment is a unique snowflake of a moment. And it's, it's, this is, this never happened before. You're living in unprecedented times. But the reality is you're living in lots of precedented times. You know, the old, the unprecedented thing is we're all wired to phones. So now I'm going to double down on being an old man sounding old man like and, and go further into it. But, but just it, my, my point in all this is it's happened before. And so sometimes, uh, and I've gotten into vigorous arguments with uh, big names on YouTube who, who really um, need the story of media is dying, Hollywood is dying, TV is dying. Entertainment is dying. Disney is dying. Marvel is dying. DC is dying. They're all dying. They're dying for sure. This is it. Kathleen Kennedy is dying. Well, yeah, I mean, we're all, all those things are dying because as they said in uh, Hickman's new Avengers, everything dies. Um, and I accept that. Uh, but the reality is comics has been in this place for a very, very long time. Comics are definitely changing. They will continue to change. We've had different dominant factors. I mean, once upon a time, the Legion of superheroes outsold Superman. And uh, they they put Superman into the Legion of Superheroes in an attempt to get popularity for Superman. That was that was how that worked. So uh, it, you know, are comics dying? No. Are they growing through great change? Yes. Are some of the big names, the people who are currently in comics, going to survive that change? No. You know that that's that's how it's all going to go, folks. So. So anyway, let me read this mail here, and, and we'll get a little bit more into it. It says, um, there, "There's no hello perch or funny." Sir Winston Perchington or anything like that. It says there are big, uh, or sorry, let me start over. I fucked it up from word three. There are obvious problems with the business models of big two Western comic publishers. There are similarly various solutions that one can propose from a business case perspective, but I don't get the sense of any urgency to change from either publisher. One perspective is that Disney and Warner brothers have decided the comics are a business in long-term terminal decline. They've hired people like C.B. Sobolski and Marie Jobbins near enough to retirement that they can finish their careers by euthanizing the industry. The other perspective is that comics are marginally profitable enough that they don't merit any attention by higher-ups who have bigger problems in the decline of cable TV to worry about. Sobolski and Jobbins are steady enough hands to allow whoever the Marvel publisher is and Jim Lee to keep the Hollywood people away from their business. I can't think of a third hypothesis. The problem is that neither theory suggests a focus on growth. Lee and Javins have at least innovated with their compact comics, but they really don't they don't really have a great content strategy for feeding that line going forward. And that's that's the mail. So of those two hypotheses, the second one is the more accurate one. Uh, Marvel and DC are not looking at uh, or your Disney and Warner Brothers, I should say, are not looking at Marvel and DC and going, you know, oh, these things are internal decline. Um, they're looking at it and going, these things are small and I don't really need to worry about them. And they're profitable. Um, and as long as they're not, you know, annoying, you know, they're okay. It's, there's not a huge margin on that profit. If you look at some of the licensing deals and other things that they do, um, there's just, you know, it's, it's not a business that throws off great margin, uh, but it's a, pro it's a business that doesn't lose money. And so it's, it's kind of ignored doesn't make a lot of money to the point where somebody would really want to get in there and experiment and tinker with it. And it doesn't lose enough money that, uh, you know, they, they need to cut it and, and call it a day. 
So it's in that that uncanny valley of business where it's like, yeah, no, you you just kind of want to watch it so it doesn't suddenly tip over into being a big loss. And nobody really expects it to be a big gain. So it just sits there. Um, you know, Sobolski and Javins, I mean, you know, this is again where a long term you know, view of this industry helps. You know, you add Axel Alonso before that. Um, Sobolski will move on or be moved on or somewhere between the two over the next, I don't know, two or three years. But Sobolski himself is like, you know, kind of this, it's like, you know, toast. It's just, you know, it's not exciting. It's, uh, it, it sustains life. You know, it's, it's not innovating. It's doesn't, uh, you know, despite people's best attempts to tie him to impersonating an Asian guy, um, it, you know, he's not feeling up interns under the desk. He's not, you know, I mean, he, he's doing just enough of the right or wrong things uh, or sorry, right things, non, non wrong things. I, they're not exact. See, that's a problem. These things aren't particularly good or right, but they're not wrong. So he's, you know, the best way to describe, you know, his performance is he's not doing too many overtly wrong things. Um, people mostly like him, somewhat like him. He's, he's, he's like a mid-level manager in a company. And that, that's what he is. If you compare, you know, Sobolski, uh, it, you know, the, the, the one thing that all of you should kind of realize about comics is that these names become larger than life sometimes because they eat too much. Uh, but they become kind of, you know, it's like, oh, Heather Anto, Sleepy Savolsky, uh, you know, Marie Javins. And, and these, these people, they, they feel like minor celebrities because we're into comics as a field and we see these names. And they'll do like the CD soapbox. They'll have a funny little fat cartoon of this guy leaning over a bubble. And that's, you know, that, so they, they feel like, like celebrities, but in reality, they're mid-level managers. That, that's it. They're, um, they, they kind of really come across as if you worked in a big, uh, insurance company, they're not going to be vice presidents. They're going to be kind of, you know, associate directors and that's, that's who they are and that's what they manage. And that's what you get paid. I mean, if you, you look, if you go into the mid med tech or pharma industry, you know, a vice president's going to be clearing seven fifty a year in most companies. They're not making that. Um, and yeah, I'm not counting bonuses or stock incentives or anything like that. That's, that's what they're going to be doing. Um, and, and so, you know, if you, if you go by pay and equivalency, they're kind of that mid-level manager. And so there's no real, you know, desire to do a lot of like, what are you going to do? Put a lot of effort to your mid-level manager. You're going to invest a lot of time into what Smolsky's doing. No, it's like, you know, you, the, the thing you count on is Smolsky will more or less, you know, keep lights on. He's not going to offend anybody. He's not going to put his hand up somebody's skirt, you know, or call somebody the N word. And, and that's, that's kind of the definition of success. He's going to more or less keep things moving. I, I don't say this to insult him, although I realize it probably sounds very insulting. Uh, I, I understand it's probably a laughable statement at this point, uh, after calling him a fat cartoon. Uh, but, but this is where comics are at. And all of these things point to the same story. There's not a big desire from the big two you know, to innovate or to change the business profile. There's just not. It's it, people are mostly happy kind of with where it's at. Um, it, if it started making a lot more money, then, you know, people might take more notice, but there's no confidence that it will. And it's in a sustainable model where it's like, you know, they make some money overseas and all the rest there, you know, the pay is relatively low. The costs are, you know, all things considered, you know, reasonable. So it's just it it just kind of sits there, and that's that's where comics are at. Now, if you're a fan of comics, if you've been reading comics and everything else, that that's not an inspiring, exciting story. And in this instance, this is where uh, you, you know that like a couple of us have mentioned this now, and I don't remember who started it, whether it was myself or or somebody else on YouTube. But I made the comment if like if you really want to insult a creator, you don't say their work sucks. You don't say this is the worst comic I've ever read. You say. I mean, it was just kind of there. It was like, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was just kind of forgettable. It was just, it just kind of existed. That is a, the most damning insult you can give it. And I can promise you, by the way, talking to a lot of creators, I've seen plenty of people go at, you know, Teeny Howard, like, ah, this is a, this woman's a bitch. She can't write anything. This is a, the worst comic ever. It's so shitty. That stuff 
and she laughs off. It's like her her comic is like cream of wheat. It's like there, you know. It's 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 like it, it's kind of like water, but without the satisfaction of drinking water. That's that's that kind of stuff haunts her dreams. And I'm not picking on a teeny, but that, that typically for creative people, they really want compliments. They can still thrive on insults, and they it it tortures them with mediocrity. Well, you know, quite frankly. If you really, and, and I don't know why you'd want to invest your life doing this, but if you really want to go at comic publishers, the, the biggest way you can hurt them is probably the one that is the most honest. And that's to say they're just there. They're just kind of surviving. The, the, they're just more or less, you know, going day, they make some money, they, they produce, but there's no real, there's no real hope for glory days. And, you know, they, they can kind of laugh off. People say comics are dying because they're not going to. But, you know, it, it's just there. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's food you don't taste or feel or, you know, feel. It's, it's like when you have to go into a medical procedure and you can drink broth. It's like you're, you're putting food in. It's not satisfying. You don't really taste it. It doesn't mean anything to you. You know, you, you could survive. But, you know. Is that living? Um, there, there's, a, there's a big possibility for comics to, to be amazing and to thrive and to do great, and they should be. And if you're a fan of comics, that's what you're shooting for, and it's probably why this current state does feel like death to some people. Because apathy is it's painful. You know, being passionate about comics, being passionate about a character or a creator or a, whatever it happens to be, that's, what, that's why people are showing up to the show. The person who's most affected by all this is is you, the fan. You're the one who's probably, you know, burned up the most when comics are just kind of there. Anyway. All right. I don't know what I've done there. Insulting? Not insulting? I'm not I'm not sure. I think I called uh you know, I, I think I called comics toast. Comics are toast. Thanks for listening.